Hi everyone, good morning. Today is 15th of February and I welcome you all to the Hindu newspaper analysis discussion. So guys, in this particular session, we are going to discuss the entire analysis of Hindu newspaper. Also, in this particular session, we are going to take up articles, other important articles from other newspapers also. Now, let's get started and first of all, let's take articles that we are going to cover in the today's session. So, with respect to mains examination, we are going to discuss this article, a demand that could hamper gender equality. This is with respect to the menstrual leaves. Then uh, rescuing grace from disgrace. Now, this particular article is with respect to uh, inaugural address made by president and governor before the start of a session or after the general assembly. Then MSP guarantee across crops can raise income and demand. We'll see this particular article also for the examination. Then prime minister inaugurates Abu Dhabi's first Hindu stone temple with respect to to the uh, Indian diaspora related issues as well as how India's cultural linkages are in, in are being enhanced. We are going to see this particular article. Then for prelims examination, Hori Hoba, Kaji Nemu and Gupteshwar Forest we are going to cover and for mapping we are going to cover today the Indonesia. Also guys, I would like to tell you uh, one important thing is that uh, see from past few days we are not taking uh, the Hindu overview which you, we used to take earlier. Now why that is the case you might be wondering. It is because of the fact guys that uh, YouTube guidelines have a uh, little bit got changed recently uh, and uh, the YouTube guidelines have become actually more strict with respect to copyright issues. Okay. Also, when we download Hindu newspaper, it also gives a, it, it also makes a sign a declaration with respect to not sharing of the material. So we are seeing that whether that thing will lead to sharing of the material or not. So because of that particular thing, as of now, that particular thing is not being taken up. So I hope that you understand that. However, if there will be any possibility, we'll try to incorporate it again. So that is all about it. And now, first of all, before going in the session, I would also like to tell you that we also take a quotation here in this particular session, particularly for essay and answer writing. And also we every class in every class, we take the current affair based MCQ questions also for practice. Now let's get started with them. First of all, we'll be taking up MCQs, current affairs MCQs for today. So first question that we have today is with respect to bond yields. Now bond yields are influenced by which of the following. So consider these following options, actions of the US Federal Reserve, action of Reserve Bank of India, inflation and short term interest rate. So consider these uh, statements and choose the correct answer from the codes given below. Pause the video for a minute or so and attempt this question. Leave your answer in the comment box. Then next is Tropic of Cancer passes through which of the following country? So consider these countries, pause the video, attempt the right answer and leave your answer in comment box. The next question is uh, consider the following statement with respect to Forest Right Act. All provision in Wildlife Protection Act that contravene provision in Forest Right are null and void. FRA violation are also crime under SCST Act. So consider the right option. Now uh, answers for yesterday's question. So we have taken this question. Consider the statements with respect to Swachta Green Leaf Rating. Now it has been launched by Ministry of Rural Development. Rating system ends to ensure clean and hygienic standards at airport and railway station. Now what is the correct option? Correct option is D. None of the above. Now when we talk about Swachta Green Leaf, it is not started by Ministry of Rural Development. Rather it is started by Tourism Ministry, Tourism Ministry along with the Department of Drinking Water and Sanitation. Okay, so this is the first is wrong. Then the rating system ends to ensure clean and hygienic standards at airport and railway station. So this is also not correct. Why? Because it aims to bring the cleanliness in hotels, homestays, dharamshalas, etc. So this is guys all about it. And now uh, moving to the next one. Now moving to the next one. Just a minute. Okay, now moving to the next one. 
who developed the swati portal which is a platform for indian uh, women and girl in stem so the correct option for this is c ministry of science and technology and uh, after that consider the following statement with respect to women's changing role in india so uh, we have seen this particular article so correct answer is a first only india's female labor force participation rate has increased okay then uh, women over the decade enrollment in higher education has drastically risen by 40 percent no it is not right it has increased by 28 percent okay so that is all about it and now guys let's cover basically all the articles one by one in the detail now in every class guys before starting the session we take a gs quotation now these particular quotations are important uh, for our mains answer writing also this particular quotation you can use to complement your answer in essay paper so today we are going to take quotation from ban ki moon former un secretary general so he says that achieving gender equality requires engagement of women and men girls and boys it is everyone's responsibility now gender equality can not only come with the with the, with the discussion with a particular section but entire society whole of a society approach has to be taken everybody has to be made a stakeholder in this so you can use this particular quotation for gs paper number one as well as gs paper number two social issues social justice women related issues gender empowerment gender justice we can take this particular article so that is all about it and now let's move and let's take first article for today so first article uh, that we are going to take for the mains examination is a demand that could hamper gender equality now this particular article we are going to cover with respect to gs paper number two women related issues social justice women related issues social justice now uh first of all before going in this particular article i want to give you a little bit of a gist of this particular article so this particular article is actually talking about the issue of menstrual leaves issue of the menstrual leaves or the issue of period leaves period leaves now guys uh you already be knowing might be knowing this particular thing that the period leaves have been in the news from the past few years actually what has happened many of the corporates startups they had started giving period leaves ranging from two days to three days to women employees now many people have supported this particular idea of period leaves that they are uh, basically this is a biological condition that is being recognized and uh, by discussing these particular things more openly taboo that is there against menstruation or against the periods that particular taboo would be removed so therefore it is a good thing that now these issues are being mainstreamed these issues are being discussed now when we talk about guys the uh, menstruation or the periods for the women now for some women it is really uncomfortable and painful situation and it is really the fact that they cannot come to the work and such period leaves are going to be a great relief for them but author of this particular article says that universalizing period leaves for every woman might not be a right idea might not be a right idea it has been provided that uh, giving these period leaves to every woman simply because of their gender might lead to potential adverse effects also it might trivialize women empowerment movement now let's understand this particular issue in little bit more detail first of all guys you need to know some numbers some data as with respect to women participation in economy in polity etc now according to world economic forum global gender gap report 2021 it provides this particular thing that gender gap has widened after the pandemic and gender gap has increased now it will take around 136 years or 135.6 around 136 years to achieve gender equality before the pandemic it was taking 100 years to close the gender gap but now it will take 136 years to close the gender gap it has increased now when we talk about gender gap there can be many different dimensions in which we can see the gender gap there can be gender wage gap there can be gender wage gap now gender wage gap means that basically because they are women they are paid less compared to the men for example it has been said that 
around the world we find this particular thing that women make only 84 cents compared to one dollar that a man makes and in specifically context of India, according to ILO, International Labour Organization, gender wage gap is a 34%. Means women usually get 34% less for the same amount of work that they are doing. Now, uh, if we talk about guys, the DPSP, Directive Principle of State Policy, we have a DPSP that is equal pay for equal work. Equal pay for equal work, it is a DPSP. It is a constitutional goal that should be achieved, but whenever there is a gender wage gap, it defeats the equal pay for equal work, DPSP, a constitutional goal of India. Also, when we talk about the gender gap, we also find this particular thing that gender, uh, women, they are not a preferred choice by the employers in workplace. And because of this particular fact, because of the non-availability of women, because of the women's not preference to going out for the work, we find this particular thing that female labor force participation rate of India is also less. And we have seen also in the day before yesterday's article that actually it was just 23.3% in 2017-18. From there, it has now increased to 37% which is good, which is good, but still 37% is not acceptable, not acceptable, low female labor force participation rate is there. Now, basically guys, apart from that, it is being said that see, already employers are not preferring women that much. But now when we come out with these kind of a conditionalities on employers, such as you have to give mandatorily period leave to every woman, what will happen? Adverse reaction might be created in the minds of employer and they might not prefer the women employees. And there is one particular case study also in this particular direction. I'm giving you a little bit outside of the scope of this particular article. So please note it down separately. Now you already be knowing that Maternity Benefit Act was passed by the parliament and as per this maternity benefit act women has to be given 26 weeks of paid leave women have to be given 26 weeks of paid leave for two live births okay now basically it has been said that it already has created an adverse reaction in the minds of employer six months leave is to be given so it is being said that employers they have become reluctant to hire young unmarried or married women Okay, so therefore the article says that now giving mandatorily period leave to every woman might create an adverse reaction in employers and in workforce their number will go down. Now, if we talk about guys the periods, it has been a sensitive issue. Now, when we talk about the data from National Family Health Survey 5, uh, National Family Health Survey 5 report, we find this particular thing that just 50% of the women in age 15 to 24, they are uh, 50% of the women in the age 15 to 24, they still rely to use cloth for menstrual protection. Around 50% of the women only, they use some uh, pads, uh, tampons, etc. But 50% of women are still using clothes. Now, it might lead to infections. It might lead to some other complications fine and therefore this is a very serious issue we need to discuss these issues that how such high now how right to hygienic safe menstruation can be provided to women and sanitary products can be provided this is something which is very much important now people say that uh, discussing menstruation and making leaves mandatory will solve the problem will create awareness but according to author it will magnify the problem now uh, here we have the case study of japan now, when we talk about Japan, Japan provides leave for painful menstruation and they are giving this leave from 70 years. Okay, but this particular leave is not used and often this, see, first of all, this leave is unpaid, but women also don't use this particular leave. According to data, just 0.9% of the women in the workforce avail menstrual leave in Japan. Why? Because there is a lot of taboo. It is being said that openly discussing this might make prone them to sexual uh, uh, sexual exploitation. Also, it has been provided that though in Japan, women have higher education level than men. But in the dis workforce also, there are the disparities. They are not equally represented. Okay. Also, Japan uh, is less likely to employ 
वेमेन कंपेयर टू द मैन सो रादर देन सी गिविंग द लीव्स और सच मेकिंग सच काइंड ऑफ अ मैंडेटरी बट वी नीड टू डू वी नीड टू करेक्ट द माइंड सेट वी नीड टू सेंसिटाइज द पीपल ओके नाउ इन जापान ऑलरेडी दे आर गिविंग लीव्स फ्रॉम सेवेंटी ईयर्स बट इट हैज नॉट बींग यूज इट स्टिल द प्रॉब्लम हैज नॉट बीन सॉल्व more importantly the issue is that even if these period leaves are given how that will be implemented that also stays a very big issue we find these examples and these are very tragic and very saddening examples for example in 2020 66 girl students in an institute in gujarat they were forced to strip so that the authorities can see that whether they are menstruating or not so when the girls have asked for a the break or when they have asked for a uh, leave they have been asked to strip and to show that whether they are menstruating now this is something really tragic really um, uh, saddening things so how you will avoid these kind of incidents if you are going and discussing the menstrual leaves so basically it has been provided that when we talk about women women are now fighting on the front line in the war even supreme court is asking that women should be evaluated equally on par with the men when they are being chosen into the armed forces even the uh, even there have been the demands that women should be allowed in the combat forces also however government has argued that women are not suitable for ground combat roles in women women are fighting in corporates for equal pay they are fighting for bigger roles so a lot of work has to be done on women empowerment but that will come gradually with sensitization and education step on uh, in, in a gradual manner so this is guys all about this particular article i hope that you have understood it and with this we come to an end and now we'll move to the next article recusing grace from disgrace recusing grace from disgrace now this particular article we are going to see with respect to gs paper number 2 issues related to polity gs paper number 2 issues related to polity now before going in this particular article first of all i would like to give you context and background information with respect to this article as why this article has come and then we'll go in the details of this particular article so basically so basically guys understand this particular thing that we find that controversies have been there with respect to office of governor as well as the office of chief minister or the state government and we find this particular thing that when a particular state is being ruled by a different political party than the party at the center then these confrontations and disputes increase even more and often the state governments chief ministers they have said they have alleged that governor acts as the agent of the central government and unduly interferes in the functioning of the state government and such kind of allegations have been made by many states such as kerala tamil nadu punjab okay and multiple issues are there issues that governors are not giving approval to the bill is there issue that governor is uh, creating obstruction into the governance is there now there is one more issue that has come into the news and this issue is with respect to governor's address to the assembly governor's address to the assembly now guys understand this particular thing that there is a ceremonial condition that president or governor will make an inaugural address to the house if president is there in parliament president will make an inaugural address and governor will make an inaugural address in the legislative assembly now this address is to be made at the start of every new year or in the in every new session new assembly new house this particular thing is to be made okay so fine so this address is to be given into the opening session every year or when a new assembly new house has been constituted they have to be given now basically it has been provided that these speeches or these addresses okay are uh, are made following the british practice following the british practice now understand this thing usually in this address president or governor will come and they will tell that what government has achieved in the past what government intends to achieve in the coming year so government's plans government's course of action government's policies programs achievements high points they are actually all discussed 
Now, when we talk about this particular address, so text of this particular address is actually prepared by the government. Okay, they are not prepared by president or governor, they are prepared by the government only. Okay, and governor or the president has just to read it word by word, they cannot add anything, they cannot remove anything, they have to read it word by word. Now, actually, what happened, guys, recently Tamil Nadu governor, Mr. R. N. Ravi. He was expected to read this particular motion, uh, this particular address. And what actually happened? He uh, skipped and said that I am not going to read it. Why? Because some misleading information has been given. Some misleading information has been given. So he walked out of the house and said that I am not going to give this customary address. Now, this is guys one of a controversy that has erupted. Now, this particular article that has come, it gives an example from the R. Venkat Raman, who was president of India from 1987 to 1992. From, uh, from 1987 to 1992. So, it was said that, when, now, I told you that governor has to give this customary address in state legislative assembly, president has to give it in the parliament. Now, when R. Venkat Raman was the president of India, he inquired that in what manner UK's Majesty Throne's speech is delivered. Okay, so this is uh, the tradition in UK. So in UK, UK's Majesty Throne speech is given, and this is given after general election, after general election, or at every year, every year, or after general election, this is given. So basically, it was realized that basically speech that is given in UK, it is very brief. This particular speech is very brief. Okay, it merely outlined the contours of the present government policy, business of the house, very brief speech is there. Now, President Venkat Raman said that why we are giving such elaborative speeches, rather than wasting so much of time in so deep elaborative speeches, we should also be giving a precise speech. Now, that will save two, that will lead to two purposes. Number one, time of the legislators will be saved. Second, guys, is that when there is a very elaborative speech, there are actually two, uh, there is actually one concern that comes. So basically, the one who drafted the speech, the one who drafted the speech and the one who is reading the speech, speaker, drafter and speaker, they are actually the two different parties who drafted the speech, government, government and who is speaking it the president or the governor. So, drafter and speaker are two different parties. And often there might be a possibility that a speaker might not agree with what has been drafted, but they still have to speak it. So, in elaborate sessions, this problem, this confrontation is big. But if there will be a very precise factual speech, then that particular dissonance will be reduced. But this particular suggestion that was made that on the lines of UK, we need to make this particular speech based on only few facts that was not accepted. It has not been implemented up till now. And this particular issue controversy is coming year by year. This year also Tamil Nadu governor has said that I am not going to give this particular speech. Now, understand this particular thing, guys, that when we talk about this particular customary address by the head of the state to the legislature, by the president, by the governor, it is just a customary kind of a thing. It is a ornament. Okay, it is not a compulsory precedent. Even if it will not be given, then the session or the business of the house will not be stopped. Okay, so point is that when it is not that much important right now, now the question comes that we need to reconsider it. But if we talk about reconsidering it, state governments might not be very much comfortable with this particular idea because this is an because this is a kind of an opportunity by the state government to showcase the work that they have done. Okay, to praise themselves for a lot of things. So state governments might not be agreeing with it. Okay, so that is all guys about this particular article and I hope that you have understood this article and now we'll be moving to next article. Okay, then we have this article. MSP guarantee across crops can raise income and demand. Okay, so this particular article we are going to see with respect to GS paper number 3. GS paper number 3. MSP agriculture related issues msp and agriculture related issues gs paper number three 
सो बेसिकली गाइस इफ यू आर गोइंग थ्रू द न्यूज पेपर और द टीवी न्यूज चैनल यू माइट ऑलरेडी बी नोइंग दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट फार्म प्रोटेस्ट हैज अगेन गॉट स्टार्टेड एंड फार्मर्स दे आर कैंपिंग ऑन द पंजाब हरियाणा बॉर्डर एंड दे हैव गिवन दिस कॉल दिल्ली चलो that is they are coming to delhi and because of that delhi government has sealed the borders with punjab haryana okay likewise now the uh, delhi government has sealed the uh, uh, haryana border likewise now point is this guys that what why these farmers are protesting so farmers are protesting because they want a compulsory guarantee on msp now what is msp MSP stands for minimum support price. MSP stands for minimum support price. It is a particular price at which government will procure the crops, food grains if market is not giving that particular price. For example, suppose wheat is there. Now let's say government says that okay, hundred rupees per kg is let's say the MSP for wheat. Hypothetically, hypothetically we are taking let's say hundred rupees is the MSP for wheat. Now. If farmer is getting a better price in market, let's say farmer is getting one hundred ten rupees in market, one twenty rupees in market, then good, farmer will sell in the market. But if market is not giving this price, let's say market is giving ninety only, then government will purchase the wheat at hundred. So this is a kind of an assurance that is given to the farmer that you can sell your produce at minimum this particular price. So we have the minimum support price. It is an attempt to support the farmers and their incomes. Now. farmers they want that a guarantee legal guarantee is to be given to the msp now what has happened a credit rating agency or the credit rating firm crisel crisel has given a report and had said that what will be the real cost of giving a legal guarantee to msp so the real cost for the government if government gives a legal guarantee for the msp would be around 21000 crore rupees on the basis of the year 2023 so if you give a legal guarantee then 21000 crore rupees government maximum has to spend now when we talk about msp msp is actually given for 23 crops msp is given for 23 crops but maximum procurement happens of only two crops only that is a paddy 41% of the produce is procured and wheat 24% of the output is procured okay and there are some few others also okay so basically so basically there is the maximum procurement that happens okay of paddy and wheat how are 23 crops it is being given moreover msp procurement also happens into some of the state so even if government gives a legal guarantee then only it will cost 21000 crore rupees to the government okay and also it has been said that when you are giving a guaranteed msp okay you are giving an assurance to the farmer that okay you are 23 crops legally we will purchase then what will happen farmer will get a confidence and farmer will be able to diversify their crops beyond paddy and wheat right now because there is not a legal guarantee government whatever will come to their mind they will procure it you cannot force them and majority of procurement is for wheat and uh, wheat and paddy now though farmer though 23 crops are there but farmer knows that they might grow but government might not procure it because legal legally they are not bound but now they are asking the legal guarantee and if it is given it will said that it will indirectly lead to more diversification more diversification okay now what will be the real cost to the government difference between msp and the mandi price okay now i hope you got it because see government what the government is doing of these food food grains government will give it to the poor people under national food security act if msp would not have been there government might would have bought it from the mandi from the market let's say in the price in the market was let's say 80 now government is buying at 100 because of msp how much government is extra giving government is extra giving this 20 rupees so the actual obligation on the government the new obligation on the government is the difference between msp and the mandi price so i hope that you have understood it and now we'll move to the next article okay now this particular article also guys will see with respect to as an example with respect to gs paper number 2 international relation now pm inaugurates abu dhabi's first hindu stone temple abu dhabi's first hindu stone temple 
now guys if you follow are following regularly then in the past two days we have discussed the articles related to india ue relation we have discussed that how india and ue relations have got cultivated how there are the personal relations that are there between the president of ue and the prime minister of india now in this particular line guys we have seen that recently prime minister has visited abu dhabi and he has visited to inaugurate a hindu stone temple which has been built in abu dhabi and it is the first hindu stone temple in abu dhabi now this particular temple was built because in 2015 prime minister asked the president of UAE to allot a piece of land to develop a Hindu temple. Now guys understand this particular thing that when we talk about the uh, temple, understand this particular thing that basically we have a lot of diaspora in UAE. What is diaspora? Diaspora are the people of any country who are living in some other country. For example, Indians living in UAE are Indian diaspora. American people living in Africa are American diaspora. Okay, so same ways, every country's country's people live in some other country, so they are their diasporas. Now, India, a large number of Indians are living in UAE, where they are doing in, they are involved in business, they are involved in construction sector, they are into the white collar jobs. Okay, and to meet the religious appetites of lakhs and millions and millions of people who are living in UAE, this temple could be important. This was the demand by India and UAE has now constructed this particular temple. Now this particular temple is actually being built by BAPS that is that is Boka Sanwasi Akshar Purshottam Swami Narayan Sanstha BAPS okay now this particular uh, this particular temple's construction will bring one more cultural connection between India and UAE cultural connection of India and UAE and it shows that how successfully India is carrying their cultural diplomacy with the countries in the Gulf okay so this is guys all about it anyhow it is also going to be a political mileage for the government in power right now because after inaugurating Ram Mandir in Ayodhya now the temple has been inaugurated even in UAE so that is going to be a kind of a politically advantageous thing also for the government in the coming elections so that is all guys about it and now we'll move to the next article now Hori Haba Hori Haba this particular article dedicatedly we are going to see with respect to the prelims examination now basically guys what happened recently there was the casualties injuries that were reported during hori haba hori haba now in the prelims examination a question might come that hori haba was recently in use what it is so hori haba it is a bull taming rural sports sport that is held in karnataka that is held in karnataka now basically guys there are many such kind of uh, um, bull taming or animal taming festivals that are held across the country and animal welfare board of india animal welfare board of india and many other ngos ngos civil society activists what they say that these particular sports these particular festivals lead to cruelty against animal cruelty against animal and it is a violation of prevention of cruelty against animals act it is a violation of prevention against cr cruelties of animal act now when we talk about guys the animal sports in india we have many examples we'll take that because uh, in prelims there can be a question of such kind of a line that can come so basically when we talk about the major popular animal sports in india there is jallikattu which is a bull taming sport held around pongal in tamil nadu then there is kambala so kambala it is a buffalo racing okay carried in coastal karnataka okay uh, uh, this one hori haba also it is carried in karnataka Okay, then there is the roaster fight, roaster fight, that is fighting of cocks. It is uh, associated with gambling and it is held in Andhra Pradesh. Then bulbul -bul fight are held in Assam during Mag Bihu. Bullock cart race are also held in Maharashtra, fine. Okay, Karnataka counterpart is Kambala, already we have seen it. Now basically guys, uh, what happened, particularly in the case of Tamil Nadu, this Jalikattu was banned uh, uh, in between, okay. What happened then actually it again got started. So basically this history has been there. 
Now, basically, many people say that animals also have rights. But Tamil Nadu government, in one of the affidavit that it presented, said that no, fundamental rights, right to life, etc., is given to only humans, not to animals. Okay, but anyhow, guys, for ethical, moral reasons, okay. Uh, on so now see, there are two viewpoints that comes here. On one hand, there is culture and custom. On one hand, there is culture, customs, and tradition. On another hand, it is say it, it is said that there is a kind of an empathy and compassion towards the animals. Now, people who will support the empathy and the compassion, they'll say that in the name of culture, these sports are not to be allowed. And the people who support that the culture is more supreme, they say that um, uh, that there are many such kind of activities which harm the animal. For example, people are eating vegetarian, non-vegetarian diet. It might harm that. This is going to be a never-ending debate. So, balance approach is needed that if these sports are being held they need to be held in such a manner that the safety cruelty against animals should not happen and human safety is also important okay that is about it now moving to next kaji nemu kaji nemu now kaji nemu is a news question might come that it was recently news where it was or on GA tag also the questions are asked. Now, what is Kaji Nemu? So, just to make you understand that it is a kind of a lemon, citrus lemon. Okay, not exactly the lemon, but very much like a lemon. Now, Assam government, they have declared Kaji Nemu as their state fruit, as their state fruit. When we talk about Kaji Nemu, it has a unique aroma, health benefits and as it is a citrus lemon variety of fruit, it has a high and very rich vitamin c content vitamin c content also this kaji nemu it has been given the gi tag geographical indication tag now geographical indication tag gi tag is given to certain uh, uh, those products which are found or which are grown in a particular region only because of that they get a distinct marketability and government can give the gi tags to the products under the geographical indication of goods act 1999 so if any product has been given a GI tag, then for example, Darjeeling tea is GI tag. Now, no other tea can be sold by the name of Darjeeling tea. Only tea being grown in Darjeeling can be sold as Darjeeling tea. So it gives a distinct marketability. It enhances the export potential of a particular product. So that is about it. Now moving to the next article. Gupteshwar forest in Koraput. Uh, Odisha is declared as the biodiversity heritage site. Biodiversity heritage site. Okay. Now, just a minute. Guys, just a minute. There is some, I think, screen issue is coming. Just give me few seconds. Just a minute. Yes. Ah, okay. Now, yes. Gupteshwar forest in Koraput district declared by Odisha as its fourth biodiversity heritage site. So basically, guys, uh, when we talk about the biodiversity heritage site, so under the Biological Diversity Act 2002, Biological Diversity Act 2002, a particular site could be declared as the Biodiversity Heritage Sites. Now, these are those sites, these are those sites which has some special cultural importance or which has fragile biodiversity, okay, which has high species richness, which have high number of endemic species, okay or some keystone species are there so to protect them 
टू प्रोटेक्ट बायोडाइवर्सिटी टू प्रोटेक्ट फोना टू प्रोटेक्ट रिचनेस ऑफ अ स्पीशी एनी साइट कुड बी डिक्लेयर एज द बायोडाइवर्सिटी हेरिटेज साइट नाउ वन थिंग दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू नीड टू नो इज दैट दे आर डिक्लेयर अंडर द बायोडाइवर्सिटी एक्ट ऑफ टू थाउजेंड एंड टू एंड नॉट अंडर द वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट फाइन बिकॉज नेशनल पार्कस सेंचुरीज दे आर डिक्लेयर अंडर द वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट बट दे आर डिक्लेयर अंडर द बायोडाइवर्सिटी act and they are they are they are basically they can be declared by the state government they can be declared by the state government after consultation with the local bodies etc okay now when we talk about odisha what odisha has done they have declared gupteshwar forest in koraput district as the biodiversity heritage site they had already uh, basically now this is the fourth biodiversity heritage sites there was already the mandasaru mahendragiri and gand uh, ganda mardan fine now when we talk about gupteshwar forest gupteshwar forest is a sacred grove sacred grove means these are those type of forest patches which are held as reverend by the communities which are worshiped by the communities and they specially protect them they specially protect them so it holds a reverence now it has a uh, many of the fauna species are there for example magar crocodile okay hill mena fine okay trumpet tree fine uh, indian uh, snake root these are medicinal plants they are found here okay already i told you that uh, they are unique ecosystems which are preserved for their aesthetic value biology biological diversity and they are declared under the biological diversity act biological diversity act fine so this is guys all about it i hope that you have understood it and now we'll move to the next so guys today in the mapping we are going to cover indonesia so indonesia is going for elections 200 million people are going to vote in indonesia with this is a single single one day polling so now india holds even bigger elections but they are not in a single one day okay so this is the single one day polling that indonesia is going to so we are going to see the basic mapping with respect to indonesia now guys when we talk about indonesia we find this thing that indonesia is an archipelago having more than having more than 17000 islands indonesia is a archipelago having more than 17000 islands okay now when we talk about guys the major islands of the indonesia so here you see that we have sumatra we have sumatra now the colored one colored one is indonesia i will little bit okay guys please download this particular uh, pictographic from the notes already i have given here so here we have the sumatra here we have java here we have java okay here we have sulawesi sulawesi okay then here we have the ka uh, the, the, the kalimantan okay it is on borneo okay so all these are the important islands major islands fine okay which are the part of the indonesia in total there are the 17000 islands that are there now guys when we talk about indonesia indonesia is also the part of the asean that is association of southeast asian nations and when we talk about the asean here you have the map of the countries which are the partners of asean laos is there myanmar is there thailand is there singapore is there vietnam cambodia malaysia indonesia brunei philippines brunei philippines okay now guys when we talk about asean india is not the part of india is not the part of uh, india is not the part of uh, asean so this particular thing you need to keep it in your mind okay now further moving on okay one more important aspect i want to tell you about the indonesia is that guys right now what is the capital of indonesia capital of indonesia is jakarta capital of indonesia is jakarta here we can see jakarta is on java island jakarta is on java island now basically guys we have seen this particular thing that as sea level is rising there are the fears that the java island might get submerged and jakarta city particularly might get submerged in the next few years probably by 2050 so therefore basically uh, indonesia is planning to move their capital to move their capital to here to here okay that is that and their new capital will be called as the nusantara nusantara 
okay so this is one very important thing with respect to capital and this capital will be inaugurated in 2024 around the month of august so 2024 this year this capital will be inaugurated so this is also very much important now when we talk about when we talk about the indonesia so indonesia it is the world's uh, basically it is the home to world's fourth largest population okay now when we talk about guys uh, that indonesia it has been populated by netherland by the dutch people in the past okay and its land borders they are shared by new guinea fine uh, uh, new guinea malaysia's east timor fine papua okay also when we talk about guys uh, uh, jakarta i told you already it might be under water by 2050 by 2050 so therefore they are building a new capital new capital also when we talk about indonesia it is part of many country uh, it is also the part of many multilateral organizations such as such as united nation world trade organization g20 non aligned movement asean asean already we have seen east asia summit d8 organization of islamic cooperation and oecd okay so these are the members uh, these are the kind of, these are the groupings of which indonesia is a part so this is guys uh, all the aspects with respect to indonesia i hope guys that you have understood it and with this we come to an end to the today's session guys if you have liked the video please do hit the like button subscribe to the channel so thank you so much now we'll be meeting tomorrow thank you